copy of God's Word, Bible that is, um, New Testament, in its entirety offered to you uh, quite freely yours, uh, simply and only for the taking. If you like one, it's God's Word, more precious than uh, anything this uh, world has to afford to you. Most, uh, precious gift that uh, rather one person could give to another in this world, the word of God, which is uh, evil, it says to make uh, even you wise unto salvation, that is, through faith, which of course the word of God is given to you for, to uh, inspire, encourage, to uh, instill in you. Uh, by the operations, of course, of God's Spirit, faith towards the Son of God. For this is God's testimony. Uh, don't you know the record that God has given us concerning His Son, Jesus Christ, sent into the world uh, to be a Savior? And of course, uh, that you might believe and know that salvation. You'd like a copy of God's Word that's yours for the taking, no cost, no obligation to you. Simply come and ask for one, gladly place into your hand. So the Word of God for you here in Stafford uh, this afternoon, taken from the uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24. If you want to check it out, you've got a Bible with you. Hope to our God, which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. There is a day coming, don't you know? Some people live under the delusion. Uh, you know that uh, death is um, a state of non-being. You know that when they die in this world and go out of it, then that's, well, that's the end of it. Of course, that's what unbelief would believe. That's what uh, the so-called atheist uh, would say. When you're dead, you're dead. That's it. It's all over. Finish. And those, of course, who well, suffer terrible afflictions uh, think to themselves that, uh, you know, hence, of course, this dignitas business, you know, this uh, uh, growing uh, industry of euthanasia, you know, that, uh, you know, another uh, realm of death in your society is growing uh, because people think, you know, they're, they're suffering, they're in pain. I get it, I understand it. And they think, you know, that, um, well, to end their lives, that's the answer because that's the end of the suffering. That's the end of the pain. But not so, not so. Death is not a state of non-being. You continue on. The Bible does say, it's appointed unto man wants to die. That's, an, that's inescapable. That has to come to us all, each and every one, born into this world. We're going to die. We're going to cock our toes up and go out of this world. We go out the way we came in, naked, you don't take the toys with you. You don't take the prezzies with you. You go the same way you came. Naked you came into the world, and naked you depart. And then, of course, well, after that, the Bible says, God says, contrary to the so-called atheists, contrary, that is, to unbelief, to the godless, after that then comes the judgment. Then you stand before God and you give account. But further to that, of course, that's not the end of the matter because you see, there's a day of judgment to come. A day of which when God wraps up the whole world scene as we know it. And of course, everybody, man, woman, and child as ever there's been, born into this world, will be raised the just and the unjust. And the judgment, of course, will then commence after the resurrection of the dead, the just and the unjust. 
Well, you say, which is which? Which is the just? Who are the just? Well, those who have been justified by God through faith. To justify somebody, to make somebody just, is to make them right, to make them righteous. And a person is made righteous, how? By faith and faith alone, apart from works yours or anybody else's or any kind, apart from works, justified by faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. That is what constitutes or makes or credits a person with righteousness before God just. And of course, well, those who are just will be resurrected and they will be judged. They will stand before God. But of course, they are they because they are justified in this life made right with God. Well, they look forward to that day of the resurrection of judgment because they will be raised uh, to hear the judgment of God. Uh, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But then too, of course, the unjust, those that is, who died, who went out of this world in the same fashion, in the same way in which they were conceived and born in their sin. They were never saved. They were never regenerated by God, reborn, made new creatures, given life. They remained as they were conceived and born in a state of death. And of course that continued well, well after they breathed their last in this world. But they shall be raised to see the, the unjust shall be resurrected too and shall stand before God and hear the judgment of God then, which will be, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. They had never been justified. They had never been made right with God. They had never, some many, many, will never have heard the things that you're hearing, the gospel that would save you. Some, of course, many will have heard it, and their judgment will be even worse. Their accountability is increased every time that they hear the gospel and reject it, because every time you hear it, you see it, you either come away from it worse, or you come away from it better, softer, or harder. You see, the gospel is a two-edged sword. It's the staple of life to some, the confirmation of death to others. Which is it to you? Well, you'll know. Are you being ripened for salvation? Or are you being ripened for judgment? But the day is coming when, as the Bible says, the just and the unjust shall be resurrected and of course stand before God and be finally and fully judged. The tally of all your sins will be in there. You know, every thought, every word, every deed, every inclination even towards even the very desire for sin, the tally will be called in. The number of your sins will all be reckoned up and God will judge you righteously by his son Jesus Christ. So the reason I tell you this is well that you might prepare yourself, you know that you might avail yourself of the gospel, you know pay heed to it, maybe perhaps take uh, God's word and uh, take it seriously and of course well seek the Lord while he may be found in order that you might be ready for that day when God raises you from the dead to bring you to judgment as he will all men. That's why you see, that's why you need a savior. That's why God sent a savior 
out of the mere love and grace in his heart God sent a savior in order that you might be ready that you might be ready for that day of reckoning that you might uh, hear the gospel hear God's testimony concerning his son Jesus Christ sent into the world that is to die on a cross and rise again from the dead in order of course well that you might be ready for the day of your resurrection will you in that day be numbered amongst the just or the unjust that's the question well it ought to be a concern to you i guess probably not but it ought to be there's a lot of things ought to be with you that ought not to be but there you go sin is a reality god sent his son into the world that you might be saved from that reality the reality of your sin in which you are conceived that nature in which you are born and of course in which you live and will die unless by the grace of god you are saved unless god graciously works upon you and of course divinely supernaturally miraculously causes you by the gospel to be reborn you must says jesus you must be born again you must be resurrected now in this world before the final resurrection comes if you're not resurrected in this life and that's what god's salvation is that's the part of the gospel it resurrects the dead you see dead in your trespasses and sin dead to god dead to the reality of your sin dead to the reality of god that's why you go about all day long calling yourselves atheists when there's no such a thing on the planet but reality of course well for dark and sinners in this world is just too much for you to bear i understand that the misery is enough without having to be brought to a knowledge of the awful appalling reality of your state and sin but god did so love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth those who believe that is but again by the grace of god not by your strength your power your intellect not by anything in yourself but only again by the operations of god giving to you the precious gift of faith not given to all salvation is not something you know that's uh, well that's distributed that's given to all men only those whom god has chosen only those whom god has elected from before the foundation of the world they and they alone are the ones that we are looking for so are you one of those well, I don't know. The question is, will you repent? Will you turn from your sin? Will you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you be ready for that day of reckoning? But rest assured, if you're not resurrected now in this life, if you're not raised from the deadness of your trespasses and sins, well, then you will die in your sin. You will remain in that state of death. And then, of course, well, throughout the ends of eternity, and then following your resurrection from the dead and the judgment of God, you become nothing but an object of God's wrath for all eternity. But, of course, the Bible informs us well, the very reason why you need to be reconciled to God is because of God's wrath, because of God's just anger against the wicked every day the wrath of god is revealed from heaven says the bible against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness who hold down the truth 
suppress the truth of the knowledge of God in unrighteousness. Why? Because, well, because they be rebels, that's why. Because they be departed from God. Because they think not the glory of God something to be attained, something to be held on to, but to be discarded as a nothing. And so therefore God, you see, gives men and women over, over to their own desires, over to what they want, to the power of themselves. And they live selfishly. They live for themselves in this world. They live in God's world as though it was made for them, as though it revolved around them. But it doesn't, you see. It was made by Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ, for his glory, not for yours. And for God to give any man, any woman, over to the power of themselves, I tell you, that's the worst judgment that can take place upon anyone in this world. More to come, but for now, that would be a dreadful thing. May God not do such with you. Give you what you want. Because what you want is nothing but sin. What you want is nothing but your own sinful, wretched desires, lusts and pleasures, which will bring more judgment upon you. No, my prayer is that God would indeed resurrect you. My prayer is that God would give you ears to hear, give you hearts to believe, give you wills to obey. Obey the gospel call, that is, to repent as the Savior, as Jesus himself. His first recorded words, don't you know, in all the Bible, when he stepped down, that is, into this world. Repent ye, he says, and believe the gospel. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. That's my prayer, is that God would enable you by his grace to obey his call, the call of the gospel, in order that you might be lifted out of your state of death, that you might be saved from the wrath of God, the consequences of your sin. Be assured, dear friends of Stafford, sin, sin, though you may be having a pleasant day today, sin has its consequences and it's more than just a bad day, more than just the misery and depression that you face now. Oh, there's worse to come. Believe me, or rather, believe God's word. God, in grace and love, sent his only begotten son into the world, not only to die, not only to die, not only to die that awful and terrible death to suffer at the hands of men, wicked, cruel men, religious men, suffer at their hands, uh, be crucified, dead and buried. That's what he came for. That's what he was born into this world for. That's why he was conceived of the Holy Ghost. That's why we have this season. Well, and it used to be at least anyway, you know, the season of goodwill, God's goodwill and sending his only begotten son into the world. Not just this manic shopping, not just this manic buying and selling and all the carnal celebrations that will take place next month. No, sending his only begotten son into the world to die, but also to rise again from the dead. That's why, you see, you have a resurrection coming. That's why the just and the unjust shall be resurrected. Because, you see, the Son of God himself was resurrected. So my question for you today is, what does the resurrection of Jesus Christ profit us? What does the resurrection of Jesus Christ profit us? Well, the short answer is, if you do not 
and will not believe for nothing at all. If you, if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus with thy mouth and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But of course, if you do not believe fundamental to the Christian faith, the death and rapture, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But of course, churches, in your land today, your national church, the church uh, of England, well, of course, they seek to explain away they deny the truth of such fundamental doctrines. The doctrine of the resurrection is denied by their bishops and their archbishops. They no longer believe the scriptures of God. They no longer believe the word of God. It's an apostate, inverted commas, church, if you want to call it that. But dear friends, in order for to be saved, you must first needs believe, believe it's faith and faith alone that saves and believing that which God has recorded in his word concerning his son, Jesus Christ, his death and his resurrection. Without faith, without belief, without a serious conviction in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, well, I tell you, you cannot be saved. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised them from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But if not, thou shalt not be saved. And then, of course, for the believer, for the believer, there is much, much comfort. But again, for the unbeliever, none, none, none whatsoever. In the face of death, nothing but despair, nothing but terror. And of course, as the Bible terms it, death, that is, of the human being, of a man or a woman, it's the king of terrors. Oh, you might be very brave today. You might laugh in the face of it today. But of course, faith with it in reality, well, that would be a different matter altogether. No, it's still the king of terrors. There's no comfort. There's no hope, there's nothing but utter despair. You know, for men and women facing the reality of death. But for the believer, those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, for them, you see, there is great comfort, there is great hope, there is no despair. There is comfort. Why? Because, well, because they know, they understand full well that the judgment to come, that their own guaranteed resurrection as a result of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a judgment unto salvation. To hear those words of commendation well done, my good and faithful, faithful, that's the operational word, faithful, full of faith, because it's faith, you see, not what they did, not because they were good in and of themselves, but they were faithful, that is, they were full of faith towards God's Son, Jesus Christ. And therefore, their judgment is one of commendation rather than one of condemnation. But if you do not believe, if you will not believe in the death, in the resurrection, in the work, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, well, you're faced with nothing but condemnation. Not just the death of your body, bad and despairing as that may be for you, there'll be worse to come. That's why I say you have to be warned. You have to be told. It has to be made clear to you 
that death is not a state of non-being. The other side of it lies the judgment. Then comes the worst. Then comes the condemnation. Jesus said, I did not come to condemn. I came to save. Does not need to condemn you. Already condemned under the condemnation of God's law, under the condemnation of sin, under the condemnation of your evil deeds, of the guilt of your original sin, conceived and born in sin, and living in sin, and therefore under the condemnation of God now, but then condemned eternally under the condemnation of God and an object of God's wrath for all eternity. So you see, dear friends, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, well, so important, so important for the one who believes such a comfort, such a hope, hope beyond the life, hope beyond the grave, hope not just for this world, but for the world to come. And of course, the resurrection of Jesus Christ signifies for the believer, it confirms them in their righteousness. Because you see, if Jesus had died, which he did quite clearly, historically proven, that Jesus died, and of course died, not just, not because he was a sinner, and uh, died, of course, in the place of sinners to atone, to atone for those who will believe, to take away the sins of those who will believe on his name. If he had remained in that state of death, if he had continued on in the tomb after that third day, well then, everybody in the world, everybody could have forgotten and would have forgotten that Jesus Christ ever was. Why is it that he cannot be forgotten? Why is it that in spite of your unbelief, why is it in spite of your enmity and your hatred of Jesus Christ, why is it that he won't go away? Why can't the world dismiss him? Because he arose from the dead, that's why because he's alive and alive forevermore. He's the mighty, risen, conquering king. He's alive. That's why you can't be rid of him much as you would want to. But because he is alive, because he was raised from the dead, the believer, the one, the one who believes, who trusts in him, in his dying love for them, is affirmed in their righteousness. His resurrection signified his Father God's approval of everything that he said and everything that he did that he accomplished, signifying victory over sin, over death and over hell, signifying the believer's righteousness because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The one who believes, who trusts in him, is affirmed, has assurance, has confidence, complete confidence in that they are righteous in the eyes of God. Oh, it's, it's glorious. It's a wonderful promise promised, you know, from God for those, that is, who will believe. Righteous by the death of God's Son. Why? Because he paid the price. And the price that he paid acceptable to God. A sweet uh, savor, says the Bible in the nostrils of God. The death of God's Son, that blood shed in the cross. The dying of the Son of God, but that empty tomb signified God's pleasure, God's delight in his precious love. 
in his name I come to you today. God's love, the love enthroned on high. His name is our battle cry. God's love, the conquering love who commands you today. Repent and believe the gospel while you may in order that you might be declared to be righteous through faith in his blood, through faith in his name, through faith in what he has done. Not you, not your religion of any kind, any stripe, but trusting only in God's Lamb who taketh away the sin of the world and who would take your sin away even today. But he must take it away before your sin takes you away to a place that you do not believe me, you do not want to go. You may be tormented today, you might be in a state of despair today, but thank God if you will, that it's not as bad as it could be. You're not in damnation yet. You're not in hell, yet you're not suffering the torment of eternal damnation yet. So there's hope for you. There's hope. But in the gospel, and only the gospel, hope nowhere else, I tell you, but in the person and the work, the death that is, the atoning death, the shed blood of God's Lamb, Jesus Christ, and his resurrection from the dead. That's the only place of hope. That's the only place to bring an end to your despair, self-despair of any other kind. Purchased, you see, by his death and by his resurrection, that's the price. The Son of God had to come and live and die. Live that blameless life and die that death for your sin, for all, for the sins of the world. Think of the swamp. Think of all the garbage of human sin that fills the swamp of the world in which you live. It's what Christ came for, loved sinners, and gave himself for them. Step down into this world that you might be pulled out of that garbage. Think of all the filth and degeneracy of your own day, your own society. The murder and slaughter of the unborn in the name of abortion. And now the slaughter of the terminally ill. Now what you call euthanasia, death, 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 nothing but death on your agendas. Why? Because God says, they that hate me love death. You've got a love affair going with death. You love it. And that's why hatred for God and hatred for your neighbor, the filth and uncleanness of your, of your generation, ah, the filthy degeneration, the depravity of your generation, the sickness of sin is not it's not a mental problem. It's a moral, it's a moral problem. You belong to that swamp and you swim about in that swamp of sin and degeneracy, filth and uncleanness, lusting after one another, men with men, women with women. Ah, divorce, ever and anon. Remarriage, which is nothing but adultery, continued. What a generation! Blasphemous religion that fills your land. Apostate religion, the back of me here. Ah, huh? what a generation! A generation, I tell you, that needs a savior, needs a mighty savior, a conquering savior needs one that's able to do the business. His name is Jesus. He rose from the dead. He's resurrected. He's alive and alive forever. And it's him that you need. And you need him desperately. All that you need to win any election. 
because whatever takes place on December the 12th, whether you stay in Europe, get out of Europe, whether you've got the communists, or whether you've got the conservative, it will make no difference to your country, no difference to your society. You'll carry on in sin. You'll carry on in your wickedness. You'll carry on in your evil way until, until you repent, until you turn. And unless you turn, you'll burn. Until you turn from your wicked ways, until you repent of them, until you get yourself to the cross and the empty tomb, until you cry out to God that he would have mercy on you, mercy upon your wicked, wicked souls. And that God, through his son Jesus Christ, might raise you from the dead, that you might be judged in that day with the just rather than the unjust. By his power, the power of Jesus Christ, raised to new life. It's what it means to be born again. God to give you new life. God to put his life into your soul and his love into your heart. Something only God can do, not you. Not all the religion, not all the priests and popes in the world can. Only God sovereignly, freely does it where, when, and to whosoever he pleases to. He must be born again, resurrected, raised by the power of King Jesus to newness of life, made a new creature, recreated by God himself. That's what's required of you. And unless that takes place at some stage in your life, in your miserable, depraved, sinful, wicked life in this world, unless that resurrection takes place before you die, the day will come when one good bishop once said, if you are not born again, the day will come when you will wish you had never been born at all. Friends, ye must be born again. But the resurrection of Jesus, for the believer, for the one who has seriously, solemnly, gravely repented of their sin, and believe, truly believed upon the Lord Jesus Christ. His resurrection is a pledge of their resurrection. Their resurrection, that is, to eternal life they await. Even in death they await. That glorious resurrection morning. What a day that will be for those, that is. Those who believe those who trust, those who lean upon the Savior, born of the Virgin, lived that blameless life and died that awful death and bore the wrath and anger of God upon himself on the cross, lay dead, buried, proving that he had died for three days, lay in the tomb, but when his disciples went to find him, they found him not. Why? Because they were bidden, they were told. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He was no longer among the dead, but alive and alive forevermore. What a pledge. Look at the old lady shaking her head. Shaking the head, not belief, madam, is that it? Shaking your head in unbelief. Ah, look at you, eh? Not long for this world and still in your unbelief. Repent and believe the gospel. 
What a shameful, what a wicked, what an evil, what an unbelieving generation is this. What wickedness, what will God do, I tell you, to such a generation as this? The judgment will be fearful unless, unless God brings you and God, unless God by his supernatural power and grace brings you to that place of brokenness, breaks your heart because that's what it takes to make you more miserable than you've ever been in your life until you come to that place to cry out to him that he would have mercy on you and that he would grant to you that he would breathe upon you the breath of life. God is alive. Raise God does you, not exist. Raise no, you from Jesus. the deadness of your trespasses and sins. Make you alive in Jesus, give you repentance, give you faith to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you, except you shall all likewise perish. So I bid you go to Jesus, go to the risen Savior, go to the one who's alive and throned on high, Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords, alive and coming again to judge the world in righteousness with his holy angels, the Bible says, in flaming fire to take vengeance upon all those who know not God and obey not the gospel. What is the gospel called? Repent ye and believe the gospel. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. That's why. And the only way that you can enter God's kingdom, get out of this kingdom of the world that's perishing, and enter into the kingdom of God, His world, through faith in the Son of God, who died and rose again from the dead in order that you might be saved. If thou shalt believe in the, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And you like a copy of God's word, check these things out for yourself and see what have God's offered to you. The testament in its entirety, God's testimony concerning His Son, Jesus Christ. Offered to you freely, you're simply and only for the taking. No cost, no obligation to you. You would like one, you come and ask for one. May God bless you. And of mercy, mercy, Stafford upon your perishing, perishing souls. Like a copy of God's Word, come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy upon your never-dying souls.